Hi, Realtors. This is Lindsay Jackson, your Chief Advocacy Officer at SCR. Um, thank you all for tuning in over the past couple of days for SCR's annual Capital Conference. Though I hate we can't be together in person um, and gathering at the State House today, we've had a lot of great sessions and I have a special guest with me right now to give us a rundown for the 2021 legislative session and kind of what we can expect in the coming months. So on the call with me right now, I have, we're very lucky to have our House Majority Leader, Gary Simrel. Um, Representative Simrel, thank you for being here this morning and taking time out of your schedule to talk with us about the legislative session. Um, so I know I could, I know you pretty well and I could pretty much spout off your bio, but I wanted to give you a chance to introduce yourself and what district you represent. Sure. Thank you, Lindsay. And always uh, good to be with the realtors. Appreciate all they do for the betterment of South Carolina. I'm Gary Simrel, represent Rock Hill mostly the suburban urban area of, of Rock Hill and have done so since 1992. Um, so some of the realtors that I've known for Realtors Day, years and years and years ago, I used to come, I was an affiliate member uh, of the Board of Realtors in York County and Rock Hill. So uh, have have many, many friends that are, are realtors in South Carolina. Uh, I've been majority leader. This is entered my fifth year of being majority leader uh, and always look forward to working with those that want to make South Carolina as best as it can be. I appreciate your support in fostering those big ideals. Absolutely. Well, we're certainly happy to have you here this morning. And um, if you're ready, we're going to go ahead and start um, with a couple of questions. Um, so first and foremost, I would kind of be remiss if we didn't talk about the biggest issue that has been on most people's minds right now and over the past year, which is COVID, and particularly how um, that impacts a legislative process. I know that on my end, I'm certainly going to be the first to say that lobbying in COVID times is new territory, but we're really thankful for our relationships with you and with our other elected officials and staff that have really allowed us to kind of adapt to all the changes and to be able to move forward um, in this new environment. Um, so what is your experience and or thoughts on leading and legislating during COVID times? Have you found that it's harder or maybe sometimes easier to um, get things done and build consensus? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it's obviously a difficult time and anytime uh, people in South Carolina are suffering, whether that be physically with, with COVID-19 or financially uh, through the aspects of what COVID-19 does to uh, parts of our economy, uh, both are difficult. I think one of the things that, that we have realized in South Carolina and that is that we're a conservative state, and I say that in that um, we, we don't spend recklessly. We're good stewards of the taxpayer dollar here in South Carolina. And so one of the things that, is, that has really helped us, as a matter of fact, 2020, uh, not that we could see this coming. I don't know that anybody could, but to, to make sure that we had enough reserves. And so the 2020 budget that passed the House and, of course, could not pass the Senate because of COVID-19 uh, put more reserves uh, for South Carolinians than it it had in the history of, of budgeting in South Carolina. And so as we came off of a very good year in 19 and 20, hitting COVID, fortunately, we were prepared for it. And so as you look now with having to allocate dollars uh, for COVID-19, not only the testing earlier, but now the vaccines, if you'll notice, we, we had a bumpy start with the vaccines. I know many states did. We have turned that around. Uh, working in partnerships with private businesses, with hospitals around the state, with municipalities around the state, to make sure that those that are qualified at this juncture uh, for, for vaccinations, that is happening. And so we move way up the list. Uh, that's very important. Uh, obviously, the safety of uh, and health of the citizens in South Carolina, and, and it gives people a comfort. So whether you're in real estate or any other business, knowing that you can continue to operate your business and feel better about it, uh, that is always helpful. So, so we've done that. That has been um, obviously an effort, but it takes us being in Columbia to make that happen. It is difficult to do that virtually. Uh, we do as much as we can. We actually augmented our rules this year to allow committee meetings uh, to operate virtually. But as far as the House business on the floor of the House, that will be done in person. Obviously, we are practicing uh, protective measures, uh, whether it's social distancing, wearing of masks, those things that help protect the members and the staff that are, that are in this great body. Well, that kind of leads me to my next question. So following um, an interrupted 2020 session due to COVID-19, um, obviously the General Assembly is faced with many lingering issues from Santee Cooper to getting a state budget on top of conducting the regular business of a new session. 
um, for the state this year, um, working through redistricting, um, the, the list could go on with this. Um, so with all that still left to be done, um, can you tell me a little bit more about what the House Republican Caucus is prioritizing this year and maybe what y'all's agenda is for the 2021 session? Well, the budget is number one. As, as we talked about earlier, we had passed a budget in 2020 uh, that was really um, good as it came to reserves, uh, that gave teacher pay raises, uh, that really sought to build the economy broadly in South Carolina to make sure that tuition was affordable for families uh, whose children were going to college. The, kind of a broad spectrum, because as you know, um, when the economy is good in South Carolina, when businesses are coming to South Carolina and expanding, uh, home sales are up, uh, people are buying new homes, uh, they're building bigger homes, people that are coming in obviously uh, need a place to, to call home. And, and we found ourselves in a good spot because not only were we attracting employees and employers of the state, but retirees continue to come to South Carolina. So we have a, a broad swath of, of citizenry coming to South Carolina. We don't want that interrupted. And so as, as we press forward, obviously keeping taxes low, uh, keeping South Carolina on the cutting edge is important. And that has continued. I think as, as we look forward, Obviously, you mentioned Santee Cooper. Uh, the House has dealt with, with the reforming slash sale opportunities of Santee Cooper. Uh, we have passed that. Uh, we just did the second COVID relief bill uh, that deals with the vaccination. The first dealt with uh, the testing aspects of COVID-19. So that is well underway. It's now in the Senate. So, so we are off to a good start. We'll continue to meet uh, dealing with our budget for this year uh, as we change you know, obviously unprecedented times for South Carolina, at least in the last 100 years of what we have seen. So we'll move forward uh, with that. We were able to pass the step increase for teachers. That was halted um, due to COVID-19 and us not being able to meet. We were able to pass that in the House. It now goes to the Senate. Teachers are very important. Uh, the other parts of what the governor had talked about in his State of the State address, uh, we mentioned keeping taxes low in South Carolina to make things more affordable here. Uh, but college tuition, again, uh, that was hit hard uh, with colleges facing tough times as well. We want to make sure that South Carolina continues to be a draw card for the, for the talent that is around this nation, around this world, to come to South Carolina because of our great universities. Keeping that tuition low, that is another priority of ours. We are working as best we can to really replicate what we did in the budget in 2020 for 2021, 2022. So hopefully all systems are go. It is all hands on deck uh, as we move forward. And, and we need every citizen in South Carolina to continue to work with us to make sure we all make South Carolina as, as good a state as it can be. Looking as well with economic development, job growth, that continues to be a positive for South Carolina. We stand out uh, amongst the nation, but amongst our southeastern states, uh, and continue to bring and attract new and expanding business to South Carolina. All those things are very important, and it only happens because we work together. I always tell uh, folks, we are not D.C. We don't act like D.C. Uh, South Carolina works uh, in a bipartisan way uh, in our bicameral government, of course, to make sure we're doing the best we can for the citizens here, and we'll continue to do so. I'm sorry my counterpart, Todd Rutherford, is not with us, uh, but I can tell you he and I talk uh, weekly. Uh, we make sure that plans we're making for South Carolina put South Carolina first, not party first. And I think as long as we continue with that mantra, we will continue to do well in this state. Absolutely. And so many of those issues that you mentioned really tie back to real estate. And we appreciate your work and, and the bipartisan support um, on, on both sides for that. And we'll be talking to Representative Rutherford later, too. So we certainly appreciate both of y'all. And in this time, we definitely want to be um, sensitive to the current environment, to all the, the issues that the General Assembly is facing. But SCR does have a couple of small priorities that we're looking to get past this year. We're looking to update our real estate criminal background check criteria to include some social security based background checks to accompany our fingerprints. Um, we're working with the business community to support passage of hate crimes legislation and working to address um, housing discrimination through supporting the removal of discriminatory covenants and restrictions. Um, do you anticipate that in this session that the legislature is going to get through much other than getting the budget done, um, taking care of COVID relief, redistricting? Do you think this is going to be to lapse? Um, other issues are going to lapse over into the second year of this session. What are your thoughts on that? 
Actually, I think you'll see uh, this session filled with vigor of, of getting uh, legislation passed. As I mentioned, we've already passed some substantial pieces of legislation. The legislation that you spoke of, you got to realize that, that while we're in session only part of the time, uh, this General Assembly, especially this House of Representatives, has been meeting uh, in the off session. Rutherford and I um, co-chaired a panel together, and we came up with four different proposals. Uh, one of which you mentioned deals with hate crimes, and I think you'll see all of those proposals uh, from reform within uh, police departments to hate crime to sentencing reform. All of those pieces of legislation uh, will get heard this year uh, in the House, and so hopefully you'll see this year, while um, somewhat stymied by COVID-19, uh, based on the, the efforts that have taken place really offline, um, last year, you'll see a renewed effort of getting as much as we can done, squeezed into this, this short time frame as we can. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. And um, you and I will certainly be in touch soon on um, some of those issues. But I'm um, kind of going back a little bit to talking about um, bipartisan effort in the state. I think this is a perfect segue to talk a little bit more about how SCR's role uh, plays into the political process. Um, obviously, as all of our members know that are listening today, SCR is a bipartisan organization that really encourages our membership to support um, candidates and, and incumbents that support our mission, like making sure we are building strong communities, we're protecting property interests, and we're promoting um, a vibrant business environment for the state. Um, and Representative Stemmerl, I think that um, you do a wonderful job at um, you know, doing all those things. And like um, you know, we always say, the realtor party doesn't see red, we don't see blue, we look for elected officials um, who really walk the walk and display their actions um, and that are really here to make a difference um, for the state. So I really want to thank you for um, consistently supporting the real estate community. Um, you make my job a lot easier knowing that I can call you with issues and more importantly, knowing that you'll actually make things happen. Um, so we kind of talked to a lot today about um, what you're doing for us. But um, just to kind of close this out, um, I wanted to ask you, what can our organization do um, in the coming months to support you? Um, and what is what is helpful at this time um, from our membership? I think just being cognizant of the issues that we face in South Carolina, again, you, you all have been a great partner uh, for us. We, we all do better when we all do better. And so I have to keep that, uh, that spirit alive, uh, working with the realtors and, and the way we all can uh, foster a better climate in South Carolina. Uh, you've done that. So what I would say is let's keep on keeping on, uh, realizing that these are tough times, uh, but this too shall pass. Awesome. Well, I think that about wraps everything up and I can't thank you enough for um, joining us today. I know you've got a busy schedule, um, but I know our members certainly appreciate um, you getting on here and spending some time to, to talk with us about the 2021 session. So before we go, do you have any final thoughts or remarks? No, I, I appreciate what you do. and I appreciate the opportunity to be uh, with you this morning. As always, we stand ready to, to do anything we can regarding the issues that impact your industry that, that help keep this economy vibrant. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again um, for your support, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Lindsay. Awesome. Thank you.